Hello again, this is our uh, third lesson on composite shapes and in this case we're going to um, attempt to find the area of this shaded region. So we're trying to find the area of this composite shape. So um, if you think you could have a go at this on your own, I really encourage you to do so. And if you're thinking of doing core maths or enrich maths next year, the more that you can pause the video and have a go at yourself first, um, the better that's going to actually work for you. So I encourage you to do that. Okay, well, I hope that you, um, you had a go at this on your own. And we're, we're now going to go through the working to see how we'd actually work this out. So the composite shape there are probably a number of ways of looking at this. I dare say most of you would have recognized the fact that there's probably some sort of a rectangle in there. And there's a semicircular, semicircular hole bitten out of in this region here. So that's a hole, half a circle hole. Now these purple sections, there are two ways we could have done this. I imagine some of you would have recognized these as two triangles. The which is probably a reasonable way to go. The other way to think about it is that that, of course, could also be considered a trapezium. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to work this out as a trapezium because that actually is a little bit more efficient. So let me just show you these shapes. So the trapezium, there it is in there. There's our trapezium. Okay. And there's our rectangle on top. And finally, there's the semicircular hole or bite that we need to remove from the shape. So let's go through our steps. The first step is to identify the three shapes that we're going to calculate the area of. So those three shapes are a trapezium, And the, the formula to work out the area of a trapezium we covered in a previous video, and it actually equals A, which is the, the length of the top of the trapezium, A, plus B, which is the length of the bottom of the trapezium, multiplied by the perpendicular height, which is from here to here, so that's the height we want. So multiply by the height of the trapezium and then divide that by two. So that's the formula we're going to use to work out the area of our trapezium. So that's our first shape. The second shape was the blue rectangle. So we'll just write that down here, rectangle. And we all know the area of a rectangle is its length multiplied by its width. The third shape was the semicircle that was cut out of the shape. So that's going to be one we're going to subtract because it's a hole or part of a hole. So the third one is a semicircle. And the, to work out the area of a semicircle, it is pi r squared, the area of a full circle, divide your answer by two because it's half a circle. Okay, so let's label these shapes. This is shape A, shape B, and shape C. So shape A is our trapezium, shape B is our rectangle, and shape C is our hmm, semicircle. Okay, so let's go ahead and work them out. Oh, actually, before we do that, um, we will draw a little table. To put up here, just out of the way, so that these are the shapes we're going to add. 
and these are the ones we're going to subtract and clearly we're going to work out the area of our trapezium add it to the area of our rectangle and then we're going to subtract the area of our semicircle which was a whole so A and B we're going to add together and then C which was a wooden label for some reason um, what's going on there but anyway C which is the semicircle is going to be subtracted okay well we can now go ahead and work this out now um, I'll give us a bit more room I think oh I shall do it in a minute okay so let's use our subheadings so the area of the trapezium area of trapezium that's my subheading you need to write a subheading like that as well. And there's the formula we're going to use. A plus B times H over 2. So now what we need to do, we need to work out what A, B and H are before we can work out the area. So we need to work out A, B and H. Well, let's see from this diagram what we can work out. Well, this diagram we can see that this distance here, 14, is from here to here. That's the distance 14. Now that's clearly the top of our trapezium. It also happens to be the length of our rectangle. So we'll use it later as well. Um, and by the way, it's also the diameter of our semicircle. How about that? Okay, so the area of our trapezium, we know that A and I encourage you to write the letters down so we know that A equals 14 centimetres. Now the B is the length of the bottom, so it's from here to here. So we need to add up these lengths together to work out what this total length is. So it's going to be 10 plus 14 is 24, plus another 4 is 28. So B equals 28 centimetres. Okay, the third thing is the vertical height. The height of our trapezium. Well, that happens to be 12 mil... Oops, we're in millimetres, I think. Yes, I just realised. Sorry about that. Millimetres. Um, so, uh, the height is 12 millimetres. Actually, I think I might just erase that. So millimetres, millimetres. So now we've got everything we need to work out the area of our trapezium. So the area is going to equal, remember we're operating under this subheading so we know automatically that this area is the area of a trapezium. It's going to be A plus B, so it's going to be 14 plus 28 multiplied, in the brackets, multiplied by height, which is 12 and then divided by 2. And if we work that out, 14 plus 28, that's 38, that's 42. Uh, 42 times 12. We'll try that again. 42 times 12 is 504. So it equals 504 divided by 2, which is 252. Half, a half of 500 is 250, um, half of 4 is 2, so it's 252 millimetres squared. So there's the area of our trapezium. So let's write that up here. 252. Okay, shape B. Shape B was our rectangle, and here it is in here. And we can see that the width of our rectangle is 10, and the length of our rectangle is 14. So the distance there, up the top there, is 14. So we'll just use a little subheading here. Area of rectangle. Now I know that some of you might think this is a lot of writing for a problem and you may start to cut corners in your, in your setting out. But if you have 
visions of doing senior mathematics at year 11 uh, and beyond, having methodical working is going to save you. Okay, It is going to be one of the greatest assets that you could have developed. So you really need to encourage that. Okay, so the area is going to equal, and we know a dimension says the area is going to be length by width, which is uh, 14 multiplied by 10, and that's pretty easy, it's 140 millimetres squared. So that's shape B, so I put it up here, so that's 140. Now the third shape was the semicircle, and I'll go to a different colour, I think we'll go to yellow, and I'll still do it down here. So the area of our semicircle we're going to use this formula here which is the area we call pi r squared over 2. Now what's the radius of our semicircle? Well we know that from here to here is 14 and we, we know that that is the diameter. Therefore, the radius will be half the diameter, so the radius of our semicircle will be 7. So we'll just put that in brackets over here, so we know that the radius of our semicircle is 7 millimetres. Sorry, 7 millimetres. So the area is going to equal 3.14, which is pi. So it's 3.14 times the radius squared, so it's times 7 squared, and then divide our answer by 2. Okay, so that's going to be 3.14 times 49, which is 7 squared, and that equals 153.86, so it's 153.86 divided by 2, and if we divide that by 2, It equals 76.93, 76.93 millimetres squared. So there's our third and final area. So because it's this one, I'll just write up here, so it's 76.93. So to get our final answer, we do what we did last time. We add our... Um, the numbers in this column, the areas of the rectangle and the trapezium, and we subtract the area of the semicircle. So the, and so our concluding statement, um, and I will just zoom out a bit to do this. So in conclusion, we can say that the area of the composite shape will equal 252 plus 140 minus 76.93. And if we work that out, it will be 252 plus 140 minus 76.93, and that should equal 315.07. 315.07 millimetres, because our distances were in millimetres, and because it's area, it's going to be squared. So there's our final answer. And so what we've just worked out is the area enclosed by our composite shape. So it's the area enclosed in here. All that area in there, that's what we've just worked out. And um, that was quite an uh, interesting problem. So I hope that that made some sense for you. The final lesson on composite shapes is going to be a more advanced problem, and, um, and I really encourage you to have a look at that, pro that program. Okay, that will be the final lesson on composite shapes.